All right, let's talk what's the best boat for deer hunting, y'all. Y'all see my arsenal of whitetail boats behind me here? Oh, y'all, I'm not a big fisherman. I do just a little bit, but I hunt out of a boat for whitetails. And I'm always looking for that perfect boat that's all around, that'll, that'll go anywhere, uh, handle big water, handle, sh handle sh shallow water, fast water, rough water. Uh, so that's what I'm looking for. I want to try getting into places other guys, a lot of the other ones cannot get into. So let me tell you the pros and cons of my four boats I got behind me. Like I said, I've been hunting out of them for, I don't know, it was early 2000 when I killed my first deer out of that aluminum boat using it. That's been a lot of water under the bridge since then. So let's start with it. It's a 14 foot polar crowd. It's a 85 or 86 model. Bought it basically the year got out of high school. Oh. I run a 25 Mercury on it that I really like. Oh, had good luck with it. I think it's a 2000 model. Oh. It'll run about 25 to 30 miles an hour with just me and I get my hunting gear in it. Oh. I really like it if I'm having to run a long way from the boat ramp to get to where I want to hunt. Oh, it's great for that. It, it really does good for uh, traveling a long ways. You get it, I like hunting big lakes with them. Uh, the water gets rough, it handles semi-V in the front, it's handled rough water pretty good. You got good deep sides. Uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of things I like about that boat. Here's some things I don't like about it. It's big and bulky, it's heavy. A lot of times you back up to a boat ramp, you gotta get to the water. You gotta push that thing off in water. Uh, if you push it off and it's on the ground, it can be a pain in the tail to push off by yourself. Uh, so most time you gotta be able to where you can back to the water to use that boat. Uh, <sighs> Another thing that I've got why I hadn't used a lot over the last several years is think about it. A guy likes to hunt and he likes to fish. What kind of boats do you usually have? A boat like that. He's got a hunting and fishing boat. It works great for that. So that means you hunt in a place that you've got a good boat ramp, easy access to it. A lot of times you run into more hunting pressure. You got a lot more people that's got boats like that than you do some of these other boats here. So that's a disadvantage why I don't hunt out of it near as much as I used to. And some places you hunt, you've got a motor restriction. Uh, you got to stay 10 horse and under. So I've got a 25 on it. Where I can take one of my smaller boat motors off and put on it and, and still hunt some of them places like that. <clears throat> Let's go to my next boat. My next boat is called a Gnook. It's basically a canoe with a flat back on it. It's a little wider in the middle. It's pretty stable. As long as you stay low, low center of gravity. Uh, It'll run in pretty shallow water. I run a 99 Mercury on it. Uh, it'll probably run right at 20 mile, 18 to 20 mile an hour with my gear and me in it. Uh, it's especially when you ever get up on plane. It, it'll run in pretty shallow water. It's, a lot of times when you start off, you're sitting in the back and the motor in the back. It's, it's back heavy, uh, so it's sort of hard to get on plane. So a lot of times I put all my gear in the front, and I have even put a 50 pound bag of sand in the front to help level my weight out when I'm by myself. Uh, <laughs> I can drag it off and get it to the water just a little bit. Say if you got a boat ramp that's done dry down and the lake's down, the river's down just a little bit and the water's say five yards from to the back of the trailer, I can drag it off. I, I, I can manhandle it and get it to the water. Cause I've got a, on the front of the winch, wind it back up on the trailer, I got a sort of a longer one on it that'll come past the boat. Oh, and I can usually keep me a rope with me too that I can run it out there a little further and I, I can get it back up on the boat. So I can get in places folks can't get in with the aluminum boat. Uh, I really like it for that. Uh, that boat's been very lucky over the last several years. Done a lot of hunting out of it. Killed some big deer in it. Y'all seen, if you watch very many videos, you've seen I've hauled some big ones out. And before I got back into filming, I killed several that I didn't, that I didn't have on film that I killed out of it probably 15 years ago. Uh, Daniel's hunted out of it the last couple, the last three years. He's killed a good deer out of it the last three years. He, he really likes that boat. Let's go to the next one. The next one is, you don't see a lot of people deer hunting out of these things. It's a, called an inflatable boat. This brand here is a Saturn. Uh, I haven't seen it on the internet. I bought it in 2020. I thought, man, that thing looks, because I was wanting something lightweight. I was wanting something, say, if I go to Wisconsin. That was really the first trip I took it. That thing bags up in a bag and it weighs like about 75 to 80 pounds. So you can manhandle it. Uh, you take the motor off, 
and the gas tank and everything. I, I remember on that trip there, I took it, I put it in the back of the car on one side, put the motor in the front seat. I didn't even have a boat trailer. Uh, so if I hit a place that I didn't need a boat, it wasn't it wouldn't in the way. Uh, I really liked it for that. I blew it, I blew it up when I got there. Uh, only negative thing, what I don't like about that boat, I bought it, like I said, in 2020. And the guy said, man, it's the only one I got, and it's going to be the only one I, I can get within six months. Because that was COVID year. Oh, he said, there's just nothing around. I think these things are made in North Korea or somewhere, or in Korea, South, maybe South Korea. Oh. <laughs> and he said, they're not one. But I got this, and it's been in a, the warehouse for two or three years. I'll see you yet. He said, it's brand new. Just had never been unboxed. I got it in, blew it up. Thing had a daggum hole in it. Brand new boat, never been opened up, but had a hole in it. I called him back and he said, oh, it's, it's where's it at? As long as it ain't in the seam, you can patch it back up. Well, I patched it up, got it where it's hole there. Went to Wisconsin with it, run it there too. Man, it, another hole come in it. Uh, it's not one hole that's just going to deflate down like a flat tire. It takes it probably half a day to, to, to air to run out. But what makes it aggravating about that is you get to where you're hunting, you go in there and hunt the dark and you come out. There's four chambers, four tubes that you blow up. One of them would be out there. You'd have to pop it back up. So you had to make sure you brought it, you pump with you when you went. Oh. Now, I think I got four holes in it. Oh. I got them all patched. It's holding there good now. But if I could find one that would, that's durable, that I wouldn't poke a hole in, oh. I'll really like that. Because I can say, just say if the water is 30 yards from where you're parking your vehicle. I've done this one several times. It's just get it out at the boat ramp where you park the vehicle, blow it up. It's got wheels on the back right there. You can, you can, they can fold down. You can pick it up on the front, most all the weights on the back with the wheels. It rolls good. I've done that several times, put it together at the, at the car, put the motor and everything on it, just roll it to the water, put it in. That makes it where you can go a lot of places other people can't. Oh, you can, if the river's fairly close to the road and it's not straight down, it's got a slope to it where you can get down and get back up, that works. Oh. The other two boats, you can't do that. Oh. So I really do like that about that boat. But like I said, the negative, what I don't like, you get a hole in it, you get a mess. Oh. But like knocking a hole in a aluminum boat, <laughs> something's gonna happen. But that in there, you still can run it with, with one of the, the chambers deflate it down a little bit. It, it, it won't run as good, but it, it will. It will run. Oh. And I've always thought too, man, somebody could come up there with a knife, you know, like you in there, and just cut, slit a hole in it. I like somebody slitting your tires. Uh, well, I've never run into that problem, but it, it's sort of in the back of your mind sometimes when you're leaving it out there all day and you, you know there's other po people going up and down the river. Uh, so that's that's the inflatable boat. My fourth boat is called my Mokai. Uh, it's, a, it's a jet boat. It's got a, a nine and a half horsepower Kohler engine in it running a jet pump. So it's small enough, it's below 10 horsepower, but you can run in a lot of lakes. I didn't say it about my inflatable, I got a six horse mercury on it. It's small enough, I can run it in any water. Oh. My Mokai's, man, I've been in a lot of water. I've been in the Mississippi River with it. I've been in Ohio, with the Missouri. I've been in a lot of places with it. They're very stable. I, I, I'm not scared of them in big, big water. Oh. Because you're setting low centers of gravity, you're basically sitting on top of water. Oh. As long as you're sitting down in them, they're real stable. Oh. And it'll run, I weigh 185, it'll run 18 to 20 mile an hour with me. Here's the negative of it is, it's very weight sensitive. If I bring all my camera gear, or oh, my tree saddle, my bow or my gun, I'm up to about 40, 45 pounds of gear. I can I can slide it in the front of it. It's got room to put it in there, but it hurts the performance. You know, you put that 45 pounds in there, it runs about 10 to 12 mile an hour. Oh, it just, it just, it, it's just hard to get up on plane. Oh, it will get you there, you know, if you're not going very far, say if you're just going a half mile around or a mile around to get to the back side of a piece of public property, it will work for that. You watch me in my videos, you've really seen that boat in the last two years. I turkey hunt out of it. That is my turkey boat. Now, I do like it for turkey hunting. Because oh, I can throw my, my turkey gear is not near as heavy as my deer hunting gear. I throw a turkey, I strap it on the top of it, and I, I can go up down the river or lake with it. I've killed several turkeys out of that boat in the last two years. Another negative of it is, it's like a jet ski. It sucks from the bottom. It's got an intake, sucks in the bottom, and it blows it out the back through the jet. You get in trash. You get in the leaves are falling. 
That's a no go because it's going to it's going to pick the leaves up. And it's going to stop that intake up, and it'll get where it say if it's running 10 or 12 mile an hour with my gear, it's running five or six mile an hour. You just at a crawl, and that is aggravating when you get in a place and you stand there in the dark and you're trying to get back out, and that thing gets stopped up. <laughs> I don't like it for that. That's what I'm saying. It, 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 it's it's weight capacity and and the, that intake. I don't like it for deer hunting, y'all. But for turkey hunting, it's a different story. Because turkey hunting, you're not staying in there after dark. You know, sometimes you leave out before daylight, but it starts getting daylight on you. Oh, that's just two, two different styles of hunting. So I do like it for that. Y'all, I get a lot of questions asked, hey, I want to buy a boat, what would you buy? I basically told you the four that I bought over the years. Well, they all got a purpose I like them for, and what I bought them for. But one size fits all, I hadn't found it yet, y'all. Oh, like I said, the, probably the inflatable is the closest because I can get on big water. I wouldn't be scared to get in the Mississippi River with that boat. Oh, them big tubes, you're not going to hardly turn it over. Oh, it's, if it does turn over, it's going to stay on top of water. It's just not going to sink. Oh, I, I really think that's probably close to the perfect, but it getting a hole in it, it don't help it. Oh, so leave me a comment. I'm curious to know what some of y'all guys watching this, the gals watching this show is, what's your perfect boat? What type of water do you hunt? Rivers, lakes, small, you know, some shallow water, deep water. What's what setup you got that's that works for you? Uh, go to the Do It Self Hunter group and join it. You can post. You can post your story. Hey, post a picture in there. Go in there and join that group. Hey, post a picture. You're deer in the boat. Cause y'all, that's one thing I like to do. I love to give a big buck a boat ride, y'all. It's just something about. You leave that morning, it's cold and it's foggy. And it's, you know, it can be aggravating. That's what keeps a lot of people from hunting out of a boat. Because most time in November, when the ruts is kicking in, it can be cold. I run into way more duck hunters than I do deer hunters. Because it just can be cold crawling in that boat. I've, I've hunted, I remember one time, I was on the Missouri River and it's five degrees that morning. Man, I think, man, I don't want to get in this boat this morning. And it was just absolutely cold. You just a lot of times you got to bundle up, put more clothes on to to go up the river. And then when you get there, I usually I have an outer layer that I, I just take off and leave it in the boat. Uh, Cause I got good hunting clothes to hunt out of a stand. But man, it's just like the wind's blowing on you. It'll freeze you to death. Uh, they can be aggravating about trailers, wheel bearing going out, having a flat. I've done all that. I've had all that. Uh, like I said. I've, I turned the boat over. If you watch my show this year, I turned that canoe over. Lost my gun and everything. Oh, that day, I would have been in the bigger boat. Oh, I would have been in the tube. Because high water, rushing water, that boat was just a little bit too little for, for what I was doing. It would it would have worked, but it didn't. So, hope you liked it. Hey, give me a thumbs up. Hey, check her channel out. If you never seen her channel before, hey, like and subscribe. We got a lot of hunts using boats. Got a lot of hunts on public land. We try giving a lot of information that'll help y'all. So y'all can do a lot of this, y'all. I've done this for several years and really love what I'm doing. It's such a passion, I want to pass it on. I'm hoping there's some of y'all out there watching this like, man, I want to do this. I, I want to get me a boat. I want to get back away from the crowds. I want to do this. So, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.